Over 6 million people have already signed up for something that could fundamentally change how the internet works forever. We're talking about China's brand new virtual ID system launching this July. The government calls it a digital shield to protect your privacy. But critics? They're calling it something far more sinister, an infrastructure of digital totalitarianism. One login for everything online sounds convenient, right? But what if that convenience comes at the cost of your digital freedom? Today, we're diving deep into China's most controversial tech policy that has experts worldwide sounding alarm bells. Let me break down exactly what China is rolling out. Starting July 15, 2025, China launched a state-controlled national internet ID system that promises to revolutionize how people access the web. Think of it as a master key, one government-issued digital identity that unlocks every website, app, and online service you use. Here's how it works. Instead of creating separate accounts for WeChat, online banking, shopping sites, or social media, Chinese citizens can now use a single virtual ID. This ID comes in two forms, a series of letters and numbers, plus a digital certificate to verify your identity. The system operates through something called the National Network Identity Authentication Public Service Platform, basically a central hub that manages everything. The government's pitch sounds reasonable enough. Officials claim this will protect citizens' identity information and support the healthy and orderly development of the digital economy. They argue it reduces the risk of data breaches because companies won't need to store your personal information anymore. They'll just get a verification from the government platform. With over 6 million people already registered and the app downloaded more than 16 million times, the system is gaining serious traction. But as we'll see, there's much more beneath the surface of this seemingly convenient solution. Now let's talk about what this system really enables. According to Xiao Qiang, a research scientist studying internet freedom at UC Berkeley, this is a state-led unified identity system capable of real-time monitoring and blocking of users. But it gets worse. He warns that it can directly erase voices it doesn't like from the internet. So it's more than just a surveillance tool. It is an infrastructure of digital totalitarianism. Think about the implications here. Currently, if the Chinese government wants to silence someone online, they have to work with multiple platforms individually. With this centralized system, they could potentially wipe out someone's entire digital existence with a single click. Shane Yi from China Human Rights Defenders explains that authorities can now track users' entire digital trail from point zero. This represents a massive shift in how internet control operates. Before, China relied on a somewhat decentralized approach, with different groups and platforms handling censorship. Now, everything flows through one central system that the government directly controls. This escalation fits a broader pattern. Since Xi Jinping took power in 2012, China has systematically tightened its digital grip through an army of censors working around the clock. They remove posts, suspend accounts, and help authorities identify critics before any dissent can gain momentum. The virtual ID system is simply the next evolution in this digital control strategy. Here's where things get really interesting and concerning. The Chinese government keeps emphasizing that this system is completely voluntary. Citizens can choose whether or not to sign up. Sounds reassuring, right? Well, not so fast. Experts warn that once this ID becomes linked to essential daily activities like shopping, banking, and social media, it may no longer be possible to opt out. Picture trying to live in today's world without using any online services. It's practically impossible. Law professor Hao Chen Sun from the University of Hong Kong explains the government's likely strategy. If the government wants to promote this internet ID verification system, it can do so through various arrangements, essentially by encouraging people to adopt it offering more conveniences in return. Translation. They'll make life so much easier with the ID that not having one becomes a major inconvenience. This isn't speculation, it's already happening. Hundreds of apps have been trialing the internet ID system since last year, and major companies are integrating it into their platforms. As more services require the ID for access, the voluntary nature quickly becomes meaningless. We've seen this playbook before, Many digital systems in authoritarian countries start as optional conveniences and gradually become essential requirements. The voluntary label provides plausible deniability, 
while the infrastructure for mandatory compliance is quietly built in the background. The international cybersecurity community is raising serious red flags about this system, and for good reason. As Professor Sun points out, a centralized nationwide platform inherently creates a single point of vulnerability, making it an attractive target for hackers or hostile foreign actors. This isn't theoretical. China has already experienced massive data breaches. In 2022, a police database containing personal information of nearly 1 billion Chinese citizens was leaked online. Now imagine that scale of breach, but with access to everyone's complete digital identity and online behavior patterns. The consequences would be catastrophic. What's equally troubling is how criticism of this system has been systematically silenced. When the system was first proposed in 2024, Professor Lao Dongyan posted on Weibo comparing it to installing a tracker on everyone. Her post was quickly removed, and her account was suspended. This pattern of suppressing dissent shows how sensitive the government is about public opposition to the system. The timing of criticism suppression is particularly telling. Experts note that authorities deliberately space out the time between proposals and implementation to allow critics to blow off steam. And by the time final rules were announced, almost no criticism could be found online. International observers worry this system could become a model for other authoritarian governments seeking similar digital control over their populations. This virtual ID system represents something much bigger than just a new way to log into websites. We're witnessing the construction of what could be the world's most sophisticated digital surveillance infrastructure, affecting over 1 billion internet users in China. The implications extend far beyond China's borders. As the world's second largest economy and a major technology exporter, China's digital governance models often influence other countries. Authoritarian regimes worldwide are watching this experiment closely, potentially preparing to implement similar systems in their own territories. The system essentially gives the government a single dashboard to monitor all online activities instead of moderating each site separately. This centralized approach to digital control represents a fundamental shift in how governments can interact with and control their citizens' online lives. What makes this particularly concerning is how it's being marketed. State media describes the ID as a bulletproof vest for personal information, focusing on security benefits while downplaying surveillance capabilities. This messaging strategy could make similar systems more palatable to populations in other countries. The broader trend we're seeing is the normalization of trading digital freedom for convenience and security. As more people accept these trade-offs, the boundary between legitimate security measures and authoritarian control becomes increasingly blurred. As experts warn, we're entering a new phase where the line between convenience and control may vanish entirely. The question isn't just what this means for China, it's what precedent this sets for digital rights globally. This story is far from over and its implications reach every corner of our connected world. Digital rights aren't just a Chinese issue, they affect all of us in this interconnected age. I want to hear your thoughts. Where do you draw the line between security and privacy? How much convenience would you trade for digital freedom? Drop your perspectives in the comments below. If this deep dive opened your eyes to the complexities of digital governance, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We'll continue tracking these developments because staying informed about digital rights isn't optional, it's essential. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.